okay so uh, i'm just going to speak on uh, uh, torticollis uh, which is the topic which i have been given to so as most of us uh, know that uh, idiopathic torticollis uh, we don't tend to operate uh, in children less than 4 years so uh, my indications are if there's persisting neck tilt or contracture beyond age 4 uh, if there's progressive deformity despite all our conservative methods using collars and physiotherapy uh, when the rotation restriction beyond uh, 30 degrees and there is a gauge deviation which is the tilt of the head uh, beyond 30 degrees so these are these are severe uh, uh, torticollis by and large most children uh, will present between age 1 to 3 it's very difficult to uh, you know do surgery at that age because the compliance uh, with physiotherapy is very poor also they will not use uh, the post of brace but typically uh, we assess the torticollis uh, in this fashion uh, this is a 7.4 year old boy who had uh, uh, you can see the left side torticollis with the uh, Uh, tautness of both the sternal as well as the clavicular head of the of the sternoglenomastoid uh, we also look at this angle which is the, the division of the horizontal the uh, what is called the frankfurt uh -huh. plane uh -huh. joining the outer corner of the eyelids and the, uh, measure with the horizontal i could my thing other thing we do is we measure the chin deviation from the plumb line to so the plumb line here is the mid sternal line and how much is the deviation of the chin from the mid line so usually with more than 3 cm Uh, this deviation is more than 30 uh, usually uh, these are what are called, called severe torticollis and you can see also there is additional uh, facial asymmetry so these are surrogate markers for facial asymmetry uh, you can see there is a malar uh, mid for mid facial uh, atrophy and uh, so this is what we assess uh, the child uh, before surgery also we need some imaging so we always do cervical spine x rays uh, to rule out any anomalies uh, after evaluation to make sure there is no pre existing ocular disturbance mri ct not required unless you are not sure about the x ray and there are certain softwares now available uh, where you can do a, a, a photograph of the child's face and then assess facial asymmetry but these are not very commonly used in practice uh, so this is a 12 uh, 12 year old girl and you can see she's got this uh, severe right side torticollis again uh, same parameters have been used to measure that uh the gauge deviation and the horizontal translation or uh, when we go for surgery it is worth spending about half an hour in trying to uh position the patient well because the key to surgery is the is the position and so typically we would have uh, under general anesthesia with an endotracheal tube uh, on the opposite side you place the head in such a way you can break the table here at the level of the head and neck junction so that you can do uh, intra maneuvers Uh, sometimes i would use uh, this bands uh, microport tapes to stabilize the uh, arm as well as the head but you don't need them all the time this is only to make the muscle taut but remember these things have to be removed intraoperatively and you can drape the head free uh, once you've done that uh, and you make a small uh, transverse uh, skin crease just above the uh, above the clavicle uh, don't go over the bone because you can get uh, bad scar formation as well and in addition to the band uh, you can also see sometimes there are taut uh, uh, muscle fibers and platysma above the uh, the external jugular vein so this is the area which you can undermine and cut the fibrous tissue so typically we would expose both the heads the sternal as well as the clavicular head and i would resect it uh, rather than doing a uh, uh, this technique where we they recommend you cut the clavicular head but do z plasty of the sternal head because these are fibrous uh, bands they will, you will get a recurrence so normally i would resect Uh, i'm not worried about the contour because generally you will find uh, they will reform uh, in, the, in a slightly extended position the important thing is that uh, intraoperatively you can you should try and maneuver the chin back to the midline you should get a full neck flexion and rotation intraoperatively so before you close the wound so you must at the end of your surgery after you do the uh, unipolar release uh, tell your anesthetist to hold the tube and you can then move the uh, whole support the head yourself and then maneuver the the head in all directions If you do a bipolar release, uh, take an incision above the mastoid, uh, expose the bone superiorly, uh, because you want to avoid the fissure nerve in the front, the auricular nerve inferiorly, and the accessory nerve distally. So you have to make sure that you don't uh, damage the nerves. Typically, if you don't get the intraop correction uh, with the unipolar release, then I would go ahead and do a bipolar release in the same child. So usually there are seven plus eight children where you need a bipolar release, and you can have severe. Uh, this is our distal exposure. So you, you drape the patient well. This is the tendonous which uh, part which is contracted. Uh, this is the lower end of the uh, tendon which is cut. And then once you cut this tendon, you go to the underlying fascia as well. Cut the fascia. 
You can see some dot bands on either Sandeep. side. Sandeep. 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 Sandeep.
uh, high counts, raised ESR, and of course, clinical signs are extremely important. If you have these criteria present, uh, more or less, it's more, more than four of them are present, invariably it is septic arthritis. If the child, uh, uh, if you have two or three criteria present, you can still start with IV antibiotics. If the child responds within 48 hours, then you can continue with conservative treatment. If there is no clinical improvement within 48 hours, then one has to intervene surgically. Well, there are many options. You can either do a lavage or a special lavage. It's an easy uh, procedure, uh, can, can be done in, uh, in the outpatient, also the ward, especially if the child is very sick. But there are always disadvantages. You may not have imaging possible all the time. And again, it needs, uh, uh, it needs a high uh, level of expertise to do these, especially in the hip joint. <coughs> so this is an example of a seven-year-old child who presented with the inability to move the leg since five days. This was a differential given by the pediatricians. There was fever for two days. In fact, they had taken a sample for uh, poliomyelitis. Uh, so they had the uh, stool sample taken. His MRI revealed collection inside the joint. And you can see that there is a fluid collection uh, in the joint. This is, this is the collection and he was toxic. So we did an aspiration, uh, which can be done from the middle side. You can use the adductor portal, the lateral portal or the anterior lateral portal. If you want to do a lavage, you need two portals so that you can uh, thoroughly wash this joint. So this family was counseled that we will do a lavage first and see. And this is how the lavage was done. So you use fresh saline, you aspirate from, and then you can, you can see the pus coming from the other side. So this uh, thorough lavage, the initial sample was sent for culture and, and uh, uh, drug sensitivity. And following this, uh, child made a dramatic recovery. Here he is post-op. So I must thank my co-fellow, uh, co Dr. Chintan, who shared these slides with me. So this child responded very well to aspiration. But this is not always the case. If you find there are problems following aspiration, they get a recurrence of swelling. Uh, please do not rely on aspiration you can still may have to do an arthrotomy. So this is another example of aspiration, uh, courtesy Dr. Rujuta, who shared these slides with me. So this is the adductor longest tendon. Uh, you put an 18 gauge needle inside, make sure you're in the joint. And here you can see pus being aspirated and then you can lavage the joint. Arthrotomy, of course, is the, is the mainstay in, uh, in children where there is a, a severe infection and you're not comfortable with aspiration. The advantage is that it's, you get complete uh, uh, look at the joint, uh, the cartilage as well. You can do a thorough lavage. You can do metafascial drilling. Uh, and also you can uh, put a drain and make sure that the infection is under control. Of course, in his expertise, uh, sometimes you may need uh, blood as well in a child who's compromised in terms of medical issues. Uh, and it may increase the hospital stay. But certainly, you know, nobody will blame you for an orthotomy uh, in a septic child if you're trying to drain the hip or any other joint. Even, even, if, even if you get a negative orthotomy, because the main thing is to save the joint. So I would use the modified smith Patterson approach, uh, center your incision on the anterior inferior alex spine, uh, reflect the muscles, uh, the TFL, the sartorius. You will see a bulging capsule. Before you incise the capsule, you aspirate, send the pass for culture or an, an antibiotic sensitivity, open the capsule to a, uh, to a T incision and do a thorough lavage. Move the joint to, to its range so that you can uh, clear all the pockets of pus. Uh, I would not use any drain unless there is a massive abscess. Uh, then only I would put a drain. But if it's just a, a septic arthritis, you can you don't need a drain. You can make some drills in the metaphysis if there is a osteomyelitis in the proximal femur, and you must clear all the subperitoneal abscesses without leaving any pockets. Post-op, you can use a simple abduction brace, uh, abduction cast or a spica to prevent uh, post-operative spasm. So a couple of examples here. This is a child. You can see axes are almost normal. The collection you can see uh, along the muscle plane inside the joint. And this is how you approach. You can see this thick uh, debris and, and pus in the joint. And, and this is the, the other picture where you can see pus pouring out. So this is not uncommon in, in, our, in our practice because sometimes children present late uh, after three or four days to you. And then arthrotomy is the only procedure to salvage this joint. And like I mentioned earlier, infection can spread rapidly to the transfacial root. Uh, so this child uh, had a lactic lesion in the proximal femur where we did the arthrotomy. And uh, children also respond dramatically. And this is this post-op uh, after nine months post-op. You can see it's completely healed. So the children will respond dramatically after you clear the infection. And at the same time, they need systemic antibiotics for about four to five weeks so that uh, they don't get a recurrence. Uh, you can have sequelae if you don't uh, intervene uh, on time. You can get this kind of lesion in the in the neck, uh, which can destroy the the bone. So this child had a 
a complete loss of leg despite an orthotomy because he presented almost uh, after 10 days and he also had a thigh abscess. So thank you very much, Rujuta. Uh, that is uh, in conclusion that uh, it's a surgical emergency and don't try and delay uh, treatment of any septic uh, joint in a child. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.